Hey, everybody, this is part of our full length primetime podcast. You can check it out on Blog Talk Radio, iTunes, YouTube, plenty more. I hope you enjoy. This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. What's up, what's up, everybody? Ricky Weaver here, along with the one, the only, Brandon Swanee Swanson. Hey, hey, hey. And Brandon, we are back for another primetime podcast here on Most Valuable Podcast. And the one thing I got to say, I want to throw this out to start the podcast. How fast do you think you could run a 40-yard dash? Um, 40-yard dash, let's mm-hmm. see. I, I think I... I think I ran it back um, in high school when I, I did this thing called uh, Iron Titans. Mm-hmm. It's a camp, okay. a camp in the summer. Uh, the, a lot of football guys are in it. Clearly, I didn't play football. But uh, <laughs> you're the water boy, right? I, I, yeah, no, I, <laughs> I ran, I ran track, and I played golf, and did other stuff like that. I just obviously mm-hmm. wanted to stay in shape for for those things for the for the next year and everything. So um, we did that. And I, I think we did it. While we were there, I don't remember what it was, but I do remember that people looked at me because, you know, again, I'm the one that's kind of known as I'm obviously not playing football. I'm the more, you know, the bro- broadcasting, that kind of stuff. And um, when I did that, they're like, damn, not bad. So you ran a fast 40. I ran, it, I ran it fairly quickly. Um, Would you be able to beat a six? Yes. So you'd be able to clear a six. I, I, I bet you I could do that. The reason why I'm asking is before we came on, we were kind of watching Rich Eisen ran his 40 today or didn't run it. He revealed it today yeah. at NFL Network. Rich, I feel for you because I can't beat a six either. He came really close. <laughs> 6.02 you? was the best time. Oh, I don't think I could beat a six. I would like in my head running like to be confident, I would say, yeah, like there'd be a part of me that's like, yeah, I could do it. But realistically i probably couldn't run faster than a six so okay so how about this so this summer this summer we're gonna do it no if they want to see it we'll this do summer it. we're going to do it and we'll film it for the channel we, we, we will film it for okay. the channel and we'll do it right out on the football field okay are we, are we doing cleats would, would we have to get cleats i'm not getting cleats okay. to run 140 okay well no 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 it's not 140 you got to run the trials so you get like what do they get two 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 runs Two or three runs? I'm not getting cleats to run two or three or four <laughs> trials on the day. What you're saying, though, is you want to run a 40 this summer. Yes, I'm going to wear tennis shoes. Okay. And uh, so are you. Yeah. And, well, I would hope uh, so. Anyone else who not wants to wear and, and anyone else who wants to participate, I suppose. <laughs> I mean, I guess it can be an open trial. Anyone else can come to. But you know what? This is kind of a thing to kick off the podcast. I want you guys to kind of down below in the comment section right now. Let us know who do you think the power rankings would be for fastest 40 to slowest 40. For MVP? For MVP. So out of the six. So Mike, Dave, Mark, Sean, me, and you. We all know who's last. You don't need a, you don't need a spoiler alert, Sean. But uh, <laughs> but I, I, I'm curious to see what you guys would say down in the comment section. But we got to get into the podcast banter officially over. And uh, we're talking conference tournaments. We're going to look at the one seeds, officially predict them as we've got champ week coming up this week. Some conference tournaments have already finished. Some have already started. And then we're going to end the podcast looking at Illinois State, who... You know, the Redbirds, they might be on the outside looking in after losing their tournament final to Wichita State this past weekend. But, Brandon, I want to start with Champ Week as a whole, and I want to look at teams that really need a strong showing this week in their conference tournament. I'm going to kick it to you to start because I'm not obviously going to kick it back to myself. Kicking it to you to start, what's one team that needs a definite strong Champ Week to either help their tournament position or push them further into the tourney. Well, I'll, I'll tell you is that I think the first team, and I, and I'll say this, it's it's a little bit a little bit repetitive only because mm-hmm. I have talked about them before at nauseum. Uh, not at nauseum, but uh, <laughs> I have talked about them before, and that is that's Syracuse. And it's Syracuse because they had that that win uh, a couple of weeks ago. They had that win against Virginia. And then they have just been so up and down. Mm-hmm. They have been a team that has just not really been able to catch any consistency at all this season. And I think 
right now they're an 11 in Joe Lenardi's bl- yep. bracketology, mm-hmm. but they're trending down. They have not played well. They really have struggled. Some games have been close. The loss against Louisville, the latest loss against Louisville, not close. Lost by, I think, about 20 points. Yeah, 88 to 68. It was not good. It was not good. And this is a team right now that was a Final Four team last season, just mm-hmm. a season ago. A Final Four team. But maybe this is where they want to be. They want to be at an 11 like they were a 10 last year, that double-seeded team that gets to the Final Four. And I think that that's that's something that, uh, you know, we say that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, they want to be at this point. (laughs) No, they want to be be a number one. They want to be a number one. That's not going to happen for Syracuse, Mm -hmm. especially not this year. But I think that this is a team right now that really is, is... Wavering, and mm-hmm. they need to be able to. I think have a, a semi-strong uh, tournament, well, uh, they, uh, but their 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 road won't be easy because they play Miami, mm-hmm. and then it's off to North Carolina. But I like that, and that's what I was going to bring up. If you're Syracuse right now, of course you're sitting in to me the best spot because, like right now, you're one of the last four buys. Like you said, Joe Lenardi has them as an 11 seed right now. I think a one-and-done, at the least, a one-and-done in the ACC Conference Tournament gets you in. Cool, we're good, we can get in. But you know the team's not going to settle on that. Jim Boeheim's not going to let them settle on that. If they could beat Miami, and of course with us, we look ahead to all the games. I know they don't, but you beat Miami, then if you can get on a little bit of a rolly roll and beat the top-seeded Tar Heels, who aren't just the top seeded team in this conference tournament, but are a one seed, that could potentially, even if you lose the next game, either Duke or Louisville or NC State or Clemson, I mean, because technically they've got a chance to get there. But if you could then just win those two, you then could move yourself up in the seeding. So to me, if I'm Syracuse, you're in a prime position because all you got to do at the least is beat Miami. I know that's no, it's, Miami's no opponent you can just look over. They're no Wake Forest. But really what they can do is even with a one and done, they can help their tournament spot and just solidify it. Yeah, I, I think that uh, you know they they definitely need to get that, that first win over Miami. If mm-hmm. they don't do that, that's going to be uh, a huge knock to them, I think. So I think that that's why my, my first team that I'm looking at is Syracuse. That This is a team that... I, I think if they if they can get into the tournament, which I certainly believe that they will, mm-hmm. I do believe that it's a, it, it, it's a team that can be dangerous. And I said this a couple weeks ago on this podcast. But they're a team right now that is not in a position uh, that really they can do poorly. Let's just let's just say that they mm-hmm. they they need to do at least what they're expected to do. Well, and the team that I'm going to throw out there is actually I'm going to take your orange and blue coloring for Syracuse. And raise you an orange and blue of my own. Illinois, the Fighting Illini, they are my first team that I'm throwing out there. Because just like Syracuse, they're in a prime position to help their stock heading into the selection Sunday. Which is this upcoming Sunday as we're recording this podcast on Monday. Because right now you look at the schedule that Illinois had to close the season. They went on a little bit of a win streak. They won at Iowa. They beat Northwestern. They won it. A, they won against Nebraska. They won a good game on Senior Night against Michigan State. But then, in Illinois, John Gross fashion, they come out and lose to Rutgers on the road to end the regular season. And I have to say, shame on them. You're, worst you're, possible you are loss. losing to the worst team in the Big Ten. Literally, the worst team Wasn't in the a Big good Ten. Loss. Terrible, the an absolute seated. terrible loss. I know you go mm-hmm. on the road. They're awful. Rutgers had two wins yep. in the conference yep. coming into that game. Oh, I know, Brandon. I know you know, <laughs> but it's just like you have to say these things out loud, otherwise you'll just combust. Well, you got to make them real. You got to make but, them real. But it's like you lose by three. Mm-hmm. You, you had the, the game was there for you to take and win and get out of there and no big deal. It, and you would have been okay, but now you go and you take on Michigan, a tough team. That's going to be tough. Well, and the one thing is it was a tweet that I saw from one of the um, college writers that I follow in, Scott Phillips, who writes for um, NBC and stuff. He even said 
in a tweet where it's like, you know what, them losing to Rutgers like this is just the most Illinois thing possible. <laughs> to go on the win streak and then just take the heart of our fans and just slam it one more time with the dagger because nothing can be easy for the fighting Illini as of late. But that's why I say they're in a prime position because this is a Michigan team that if you look this season, it's interesting because at home we beat them 85 to 69. I know that was earlier in the season, January 11th, but 10 days later we go into Ann Arbor, we lose 66 to 57. I know it's only a nine point loss, but it's still a loss. I think we're in a prime position to almost do the same thing as Syracuse. The only difference is if we won and done, we've helped our case because we've beaten a good team, a solid team, I would say, in Michigan. But at the same time, we're not already sitting in the tournament. So, I mean, losing to Purdue, I don't think losing to Purdue would hurt us too much, but it wouldn't necessarily. I don't know if a win over Michigan would be enough to get us in alone. We would need a lot of other things to happen, a few other upsets to happen. But if we could beat Michigan, then do the impossible and beat the Boilermakers, just a win alone over the top-seeded Boilermakers, I think, can propel us into the tournament. Will it happen? Probably not. I think that for for Illinois right now is what they need to do is they need to do what they can, Mm -hmm. and that is beat Michigan. If you beat Michigan and you're able to take care of the business that you have to take care of, then you, you can't help how other things work mm-hmm. themselves out. If you don't make the tournament, then you look back and you're like, you know what? That, it's on us. You know, it, it, no one, the, the committee didn't mm-hmm. take it out of our hands. We, we hurt ourselves. We hurt ourselves. That loss to Rutgers really hurt. Some other games throughout the season really hurt. And then you kind of internalize and see what you have to do to move forward for next season. But if you beat Michigan, things work out how, how, they need to for Illinois to possibly do it. If they can play a close game mm-hmm. then against Purdue, maybe you have some things working in your favor. But I still look that loss to Rutgers, that I don't know if that does them in it, it certainly doesn't do them in alone. But it doesn't look good. No, it doesn't at all at all on I mean, their resume. We, we could have been closer than we are because if we look at Joe Lenardi's bracketology, which we're gonna use for the barometer all show. They are the third team of the first four out. So we're close. We're right behind Rhode Island and Kansas State. We need teams like it's going to be interesting to see what USC does, what Wake Forest does, what Xavier does, because those are right now the last four in along with Illinois State. They're one we're going to talk about later. They have no games left to play. So are they going to stay there? Are they going to move? The one thing before you give your second team, I want to ask you, Two questions with the Fighting Illini just coming off the top of my brain. Number one in this tournament, do you think John Gross is coaching for his coaching for his future with the Fighting Illini? And if yes, how many games does he have to win in the conference tournament to keep his job? Well, I, I personally do think that he is he is coaching uh, for his job right now, and I and I say that I, I said it again a, a couple of weeks ago mm-hmm. right here on this podcast. I'm right sticking, in that exact chair. I'm uh, right, exact spot. <laughs> I think uh, I am sticking to that. I do not think that mm-hmm. you know. I think the loss on the road at Rutgers, the worst team in the Big Ten by far, does not look good. Doesn't help his case. I think that at this point, Illinois has had a couple of, you know, they had that win streak put together, mm-hmm. but I still don't think that an, an end of a season will save him in this position where he is right now. You know, it's not like you have been some awesome program, and, you know, coming into the year. You guys were really, really good, struggled, then started to do well again. Mm-hmm. It's not like one of those things. Uh, so, yes, I do believe that he is coaching for his job. And how many games? I think that. That you would need to get past Purdue and then whoever else that might be after them. So at this point, you think he's getting fired. Let's put it that way. I do. Nobody, I do. Nobody's I may be com- expecting us to beat Purdue. I may if we be complete. I may be absolutely completely wrong. Mm-hmm. He may not be getting fired at all. But I think that Illinois, if they really want to revitalize that program mm-hmm. and make it something, make it great again. I think that. <laughs> Definitely. It's going to be huge. I definitely think that they huge. need to to bring in a guy who's going to be different than Gross and, mm-hmm. and bring in a guy who's going to help them win within their conference. I mean, look at that over the years. We looked at that the, when we talked about him. It has mm-hmm. not been good. 
His overall records haven't been terrible. I mean, among you know what terrible actually means. But our but Big Ten record, the, the are Big right Ten there record has been awful. Right it's there been in awful. the middle. Right, we're, we're constantly eight nine. But who's your second team? Who needs who needs a big champ week besides Syracuse and Illinois? Well, here I'll tell you this: it's not someone who necessarily needs it because okay. right now they're in the tournament as a seven. Okay, you're not taking my next team. Good. That's the first no. thing I thought in my head. He's like, I'm like, because we haven't talked about who we're saying, so I'm wondering if we're going to steal one of our teams once in a while. So the the team that I want to talk about, they're a team that's in the tournament. I, I'd say that they're they're set uh, right around where they are, but a team that I think could stand to use a nice tournament run mm-hmm. and a team that I think could, after watching them play this last weekend, is Oklahoma State. Oh, yeah. They gave Kansas oh, yeah. a run, and they showed that mm-hmm. Kansas can be beatable. I think the final score was like 85-80 yep. in that game. But Oklahoma State really could give Kansas a run for their money, and I'm alluding a little mm-hmm. bit, foreshadowing to what I'm going to talk about later for <laughs> one of the videos that we will be doing. Because you're going to preview the pack. I will the be pe- previewing the Big 12. But I definitely think that Oklahoma State could stand to have a very, very good tournament. If they do, they could move to a six. They could possibly, I think their cap is a five. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think Even that, if they win the whole Big 12 yeah. conference tournament? Yeah. Okay. I do. I think that that would still be their cap at a five. But You know what's interesting? I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're but fine. What's interesting is the last two teams they lost against, three-point loss to Iowa State, who they're playing in the first game, of their Big 12 conference tourney, the team that they lost to that you just said on Saturday, the next team, Kansas, they could basically right the ship and say, you know what, revenge loss one, revenge loss two, boom, boom, we're going on to the semifinals. In that case, I want to say it would be the semifinals yeah. if they win both those games. Actually, no, they win both of those. They're in the championship game of the Big 12. Oh, yeah, no, no, yeah, the, the semifinal game would, would be, be Kansas. Kansas. And then you get, like, at that point, you can get anybody on the opposite side. You're Most looking likely at Baylor, be Baylor West, Virginia, West Virginia, Texas Tech, Kansas State. Oh, dude, Texas is going to make a run, man. Yeah. The Longhorn's going to make a run, but no, seriously – Oklahoma State could make a run for that title game. I think so, and that's why that's why I think that they're an interesting mm-hmm. one, and, and, and I'll probably definitely harp a little bit more on them, but in a positive <laughs> way, when you say harp on mm-hmm. them, I'll definitely talk about them a lot in, in that Big 12 uh, conference tournament preview video. But I, I think the Oklahoma State definitely is a team that I'm watching because, you know, because of how they played – on Saturday, but also because mm-hmm. of some of the games that they've played that they've not not won, but they've been so close. They've been so close, and they have put up a heck of a lot of offense. Mm-hmm. 80, over 85 points per game. That's seventh best in all of college basketball. And that is just typical for an Oklahoma State Big 12 team. A lot of offense. And I think if they're able to bring those, point, those kinds of point totals – to the to the tournament, mm-hmm. to the conference tournament, then to the national tournament. This is a team that could make a surprise run. Well, and one of the things that I'm going to throw out there is they are also playing a team that I am very nervous about because they are m- most of the time. I just have this feeling that Kansas is just just they're a magnet for the upset. They're a magnet for the upset where it's like up oh, up oh, up. Oh, we got here. We got the Sweet Sixteen gone. Oh, we got to the second round, gone. And this is a team where you look at their last games, besides the TCU game, I know that they've had a few 10-point wins, two of them in the last few games, but a lot of them have been close. The Baylor game, they lost against West Virginia. They lose against Iowa State. The Oklahoma State game's been close. So Oklahoma State has a favorable run with getting the ISU Cyclones in the first round. Not easy, but favorable, and then Kansas, a team that, yeah, they're a one seed, but they could get upset in the conference tournament. Absolutely. It's totally possible. The one team I want to throw out there, kind of like you, this is a team that doesn't need a big— well, it's weird. They don't need it, but I'm going to say they need it, Hmm. and it's going to be the UCLA Bruins. Yeah. The reason why is they are in a prime position right now to make a run at maybe even a one seed. Because you look at them right now, I want to say Joe Lenardi has them as a three seed right now. 
I think they're, yeah, three seed in the Midwest he has them right now. And just based off who they could play in this conference tournament, I mean, game one, they're going to play either Washington or Southern California. They'll beat either one of those. I have no qualms, qualms against it. Washington ain't that good of a team. USC is going to be interesting because right now they are, I believe, one of the last four in, could be playing to try to claw onto one of those spots. But then if you beat one of those first two opponents, there's the possibility of getting Arizona in the semis and then Oregon in the conference finals. You get that, you beat Arizona, you beat Oregon, I think this team could jump from a 3 to a 1, or definitely from a 3 to a 2, because they would beat both a 3 seed and a 2 seed. Basically, if they if if they beat Arizona, they beat Oregon, they're taking Oregon's 2 seed away from them. That's what they're doing. But even with beating both of those, let's say North Carolina fumbles, let's say Kansas fumbles, God forbid, what if Baylor beats Nova. One of those one seeds go, goes down. We even talked about it right now as we're recording the podcast on Monday. We're going to have the semifinals for Gonzaga and their national or their conference tournament. There's a chance that Bay, or B, BYU, by the time we're recording this, can beat St. Mary's, then beat Gonzaga again. Anything can happen. So, I mean, if UCLA can run the table, win their conference tournament, they could be a one seed. Yeah, no, absolutely, and that's something that we've talked about in the past as mm-hmm. well. And, and and UCLA, a team that very, very good. And and I know that your your dream scenario that you've been continuing to say is that UCLA will be able to have get get through, win the games that they need to win, mm-hmm. and then they'll be able to look on the other side as Arizona and Oregon battle it out amongst each well, other. It was on that one. It was Oregon. Oregon's in the prime position because they can deal with you if the. Top seeds move on. They can deal with Utah and then, okay, UCLA, Arizona, let's go ahead and battle it out and we'll wait for you in the conference championship. So I had it a little backwards. You had it mixed but, up. But, uh, so, yeah, so if you're looking at Oregon, that's what Oregon yeah. wants. But um, <laughs> but uh, UCLA, they're, they're a team that's, that's, that's pretty hot mm-hmm. right now. And I think that uh, for them, that is something that's definitely doable. But I think that looking at some things that I have for with, with Joe Lenardi is that he truly does believe that even no matter what they do in the conference tournament, mm-hmm. that they'll stay at a number three because of the fact that the other teams that are above them. And, mm-hmm. and, and I think that, um, that that would make sense. But uh, UCLA is certainly a team that uh, I would not want to be playing right now. No. Not at all. And that's why I say if they win their conference tournament – that's where the shakeup will be because right now I feel like you said Joe Lenardi is solid three, but if they they beat Arizona, they beat Oregon, there's really no reason for the committee not to say, you know what, we're going to take this two seed away from Oregon and we're going to go ahead and give it over to you guys in the Bruins. But let's go one more team each. Give me one more team that could use a strong week this week in the conference tournaments. Okay, I'll tell you another one. And and again, this is probably not one that uh, a whole lot of people would be would be looking at. Mm-hmm. Again, a team that is in the tournament right now as a nine seed, and that would be the Arkansas Razorbacks. And I say that they need to have a strong tournament because they are – Right now, a, a like I said, a number three seed in that they were twelve and six in their conference, eleven and two non conference, but zero and four versus the RPI top twenty five. This is a team that I think that if they are able to win a couple of games, mm-hmm. get to the game against what I believe will probably be Florida, give Florida a game, possibly even beat them. Mm-hmm. This is a team that might be able to show, hey. We can do some stuff in this tournament, maybe move up a spot. Again, that 8-9 game is always one of those kind of games. But I think that uh, the Arkansas Razorbacks are, again, a team that uh, I'd be looking at that could be a team that has a chance to move up a little bit. They, I, th- I would say that they want to be able to have a, a strong go of it just because then they can say when they're getting to the tournament, hey, you know what? We're a team 12 and 6 in our conference. A lot of people look at our conference SEC and basketball not that big outside of the mm-hmm. top 2 is what people are looking at, but they're going to try and make the case that hey, make it the top 3 and 
other teams outside their conference should be scared. They have only had two losses outside of it. Well, and the last team I'm going to throw out there, this is a team that is totally going to come out of left field. You ready for it? Rhode Island. They're a team right now in the Atlantic 10 where if we look at Joe Lenardi, he's got him on the outside looking in. They're one of the first of the first four out. They're the first team knocking on the door trying to get back in. And really, they're in a unique situation because they'll have a two-day bye as the first day it will be the thir- the 12-13 matchup between UMass and St. Joe's. Then you will have um, St. Louis and um, the 14th seeded. I'm not even going to try to say that college. It's D-U- D-U- D-U-Q is the, un- the Duquesne? acronym Duquesne. That's it. You know me. I'm bad with words. Duquesne. I, I, that's what I was. That's what was floating around <laughs> it's up Duquesne. here. Duquesne. And I knew it was wrong. But you have that, and then you have the second day, and then boom, they get to play. Most likely, they're going to play St. Bonaventure, and then the Bonnies. The Bonnies. Remember when they made that tournament run? When they went ahead and do. got in there. I do. And that that's actually an opponent. That four five. You got to avoid at the least. You got to avoid an upset against the Bonnies. And then they're another team has a chance then to maybe play that one seeded team in Dayton. And if they can upset Dayton and get to the A10 championship game, just getting there, I think could get them into a play in game where really what it could be like is beat Dayton and you get to play in Dayton for your first game of the tournament. Yeah, I think that that's, that's one of the biggest things right now. And, and taking a look at the two games that they played this season against Dayton. They lost by a combined, the mm-hmm. two of them, a combined four points. Lost yeah. by three and one, one and another. Rhode Island is a team that they're they're knocking. They're knocking. Mm-hmm. I think they may be able to break that door down. Especially with the team right above them being Illinois State, who we're going to talk about later in the podcast. But this is where you guys come in. Let us know down below, what are some teams that you think need to have a strong conference tournament, a strong championship week this week in the conference tournaments? Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed a lot of emotion. If you want more, click this video right over my left shoulder. You will certainly not regret it.